What is up, everybody? This is your man, Dre Mack, with another episode of The Dre Mack Show. Today, I'm actually going to do a, a topic called men's accountability. This is a leadership tool training for men to understand that if we're going to be leaders, we have to take accountability. And today, we're going to talk about that only on The Dre Mack Show. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Trey Mack, with another episode of the Trey Mack Podcast Show. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Dre Mac Show live on YouTube. This is the first time that you listen to this. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you hit that bell notification so you never miss any time that I'm actually live. Uh, I'm also live inside of Clubhouse. You know how I do it. Uh, th There's a live audience inside of Clubhouse. So when we do get to, qu uh, to the question and answer in period, you're going to actually hear people that are listening to this also from inside of Clubhouse. This is live on the Facebook page, the Dre Mac Show on the Facebook page also. Uh, today, I'm actually going to talk about the accountability of men. And this is just something that I've been I've been hearing so much, especially inside of Clubhouse. And if you don't know what Clubhouse is, Clubhouse is an app where you could be able to uh, have a stage where you could be able to talk, bring people up. You could be able to have discussions, whether you're having discussions about politics, tech, tech, YouTube, uh, algorithms or whatever. Or th folks want to get into demon time. This is just what it is in here. But I've been hearing a lot of these groups, uh, these um these guys who have these uh, platforms and stuff like this on side of Clubhouse. And I've been hearing a lot of things about women taking accountability. And I think this is just something that it, it's been, it's, it's almost like a burning desire to do this because a lot of men are blaming just women on things that have happened in this society. And this is where I have a little pushback because we are also talking about the same men who said they're alphas and they are leaders in our community. And I always feel like this. If you feel that way, what are you doing to stop the progression of the destruction in the community? Because if you're not stopping the progression of destruction, you are part of the, you are a part of the problem. And a lot of these men are talking about all oh, the women are doing this and the women are choosing this and the women are doing that. And women and women, 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 women. What about your accountability? And I'm about to get to reason why it's the man's job to be accountable for the society, not the woman. And the way that I'm going to break this down, because I'm going to make this just as easy as I can possibly make it. And one of the things that I'm going to do is, especially on the new YouTube channel, and on the Facebook channel, I'm going to share my I'm, I'm going to share my screen because I want people to know what the definition of leadership and accountability is, because I don't think we actually really, truly understand what these terms are. When you start talking about alphas and you're talking about betas, you know, if you if, if anybody who's been watching my show long enough, you know, I don't use the term beta. I actually use the term Omega because I look at it as a wolf pack and I'm going to break this down for the people in, uh, people on Clubhouse so they can be able to understand because I'm about to I, I want people to understand this is in context. So when you start talking about statistics, if you're not breaking it down into context and making everybody understand the context of what's going on, you're going to be able to miss something because there's going to be missing variables in there to get to the actual answer of the equation. So let me first do this. Let me share you guys on on the uh, on the show what accountability is, what that what accountability means. 
So give me just a second here while I go ahead and get this uh, set up. And this is just from Oxford. So if you see this, uh, it says accountability is when an individual or department expresses consequences for their uh, for their performance or actions. Accountability is essential for an organization and for a society. Without it, it is difficult to get people to assume ownership of their own actions because they believe they will not face any consequences. That's accountability. So what is that? What do you? So I know people are like. Well, okay. What are you trying to say on that? You trying to say that we're not taking accountability? We're not. We're not expressing uh, the accountability. I'm going to tell you this. No. There is too many men that say that they're leaders that not taking accountability for the things that happen in our society. And I'm going to give you a prime example of this. So we're looking at the way the black community is set up right now. The black community since the, since the, the end of the 19, uh, since the sign, the bill, the 1964 civil rights bill, after the 1964 uh, civil rights bill has happened, we've still always been fighting for equality. What we did not do is say, okay, if we're not going to get equality here, what can we do to change? If I can't get equality here, let's get a group of people to, to, to go over into a foreign land like it's somewhere in Africa, like in Ghana, you know what I'm saying? Sierra Leone, uh, different places like that. And let's talk to the leaders of these particular areas and say, these are the concerns that we're having in America. Can we be able to be a sovereign country here? So that way we're not begging to be at the seat of someone because the leadership, the account of the real leadership is that I, I, I can either be the beggar here or I could go somewhere else. You know, despite the fear, despite all of this and try to be better, maybe somewhere else. Right. Understand what I'm saying? Yet we still was here because we built this. We did this. We did that. Very understandable. But we're still getting beat. We still got the war on drugs. And I'm, I, and, and I'm going into the Richard Nixon era because after Lyndon B. Johnson became president, we go, we're going to the Richard Nixon era. Where is the war on drugs? Right. So we go through the war on drugs from the Richard Nixon era and then the rise of mass incarceration. If you go and look at blackdemographic.com, which I'm going to uh, be able to bring up, I'm going to be able to show you the rise of mass incarceration and how when you try to take away the leadership, like modern day lynching, like what we see when we see Philando's Castillo's and the George Floyd's of the world and all these other people, the modern day lynching, it stops you in your mind to say, what can I do to get away from this? It makes you fearful. And black men, we cannot be leaders if we're in fear. That's the accountability that we have to take. So I'm going to be able to show uh, to show this on the on the YouTube page and uh, on the actual uh, from the black from, from the YouTube page and the Facebook page, because I want I want people to be able to understand what has happened, how we got here and how I feel that men are not taking the responsibility that they should be taking. Because we are lacking the leadership. Our leader, we feel like our leadership should be the leadership that's coming from television, which is the biggest propaganda in the whole entire world. And men are not seeing that the propaganda that is being shown here is, a, is going to be destruction uh, with us. So give me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick. And I'm going to bring I'm going to bring this in. Uh, Woody, can you please mute your mic, please? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be able to sh I'm, I'm going to be able to share this statistic with you because a lot of these Facebook groups, they come in here and they're talking about, uh, you know, 72 percent of black women are single mothers. Well, again, where is the man's accountability? Because we're supposed to be the leaders. We're supposed to be the strongholds in the black community. And if 72% of our women are going through this, where is our accountability for that? Because we hold a position of power being men. If we hold a position of power being men, why aren't we taking accountability for the things that are happening in our community? If we are the leaders, we are the alphas. Why aren't we leading our women to eat? Again, I'm going to explain to you why I say alphas and omegas. In a wolf pack, 
the alphas are the ones that actually go out and hunt and make sure the whole entire uh, the whole entire uh group is fed right they are the ones that make sure everyone eats the omegas in the groups are the ones who gets the scraps so if the alphas who don't call themselves alphas they just go out there and do what they're supposed to do naturally they don't have to call themselves alphas or any of that they don't have to boast they don't have to brag they just get they just go out and get it done so if the ones that's supposed to go out there and get it done ain't checking these omegas whose fault is that whose fault is not teaching the ones that are, that are in this what is our responsibility when we have these uh, the, these men who are doing all the destruction why aren't we checking them and holding them accountable and actually telling them hey you're wrong you can't do that or are we comfortable because we're afraid to check our brother y'all remember new jack city you remember the scene when it was like am i my brother's keeper yes i am so if i'm my brother's keeper if i see my brother doing wrong i need to check that we can't have our brothers in a position where they're they feel like they can't be checked and that the older brothers, I don't care how many times, I, I, I don't care what American, the American government locked up a lot of good brothers. But what about when those brothers leave? Why are we taking responsibility? Why are we taking the leadership after the brothers who were good dudes get caught up in the system? Why aren't we taking the leadership role to make sure the black community still stays in, 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 in a position where we can still be able to rise? Or are we so comfortable within the propaganda that we've been fed that we don't feel like we need to even listen anymore? So let me go ahead and let me let me do this. Because I got I got some of the comment section going on here right now on the uh, on the Facebook page. But I want to share I want to share something from blackdemographic.com real quick. Because I want I want to show you. Because I can show you better than I can tell you. And I want to show you something that when people are talking about what's going on with, 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 with black people, and especially when it's coming into marriage and, and different things like that, I want I want to show you something here. And if you're looking at it right now on the YouTube ch channel and the Facebook page, you'll actually see that. In, in the 1900s, only 23,370 men, black uh, men, were in, incarcerated. So if you go up, you start seeing in 1971, the war on drugs from the uh, Richard Nixon era. Right? So now we started to have a steady incline from the, 19, uh, from the 1900s all the way to the 1970s. But the war on drugs spiked the rise of mass incarceration. What it, it what has uh has not been said is not only was the rise of mass incarceration a big problem when we start talking about men going to jail, the leaders of our community going to jail. We also have to start talking about the drug epidemic, the war on drugs, crack cocaine and, and weapons being placed in the black community. This is where I said men need to take responsibility for this. And the men in our community, because we could have easily, easily said we're not going to have drugs in guns in our community, just like the Black Panther Party tried to preach before the before the government destroyed them from within. What we did was pick up the drugs, pick up the guns and destroyed our own communities. And then we try to blame the rise of mass incarceration on the government. But it was our responsibility if we should pick up the, uh, the guns and drugs and sell them and shoot each, uh, shoot each other. So when we start looking at from 19, from the 1900s all the way to 1984, we had a rise of over 500, 500,000, 500, uh, 5, uh, 500, 491,000 black men. That's just black men that went to prison in that time period. And that's not including municipal court charges either. People who was locked up on municipal charges. That means city charges, not state and federal charges. That's just city charges. 
So we can actually, if we had that statistic, we can actually say there were probably more black men that was in was in municipal and state prisons than any time since slavery. But again, who was the response? Who was responsible for picking up the guns and drugs? If they throw it there, is it our responsibility to pick it up, or is our responsibility to tell them to get the hell out of our community with that mess? But because, and this is a this is the, also the caveat on that. And I'm gonna take this away from my uh, uh, screen because there's a there's a second side of that. The second side of that is the reason why that that became a big thing because in that particular time period, also you had a lot of the companies, these major factories, the Firestones and and the Goodyears and all these major factories start outsourcing the jobs that drove black people in those communities. I'm gonna give you a prime example. Compton, California was an all white neighborhood and I know people who have seen them. It was an all white community because they had so many good jobs out there and you had so many black people uh, that was coming from the South, you know, that wanted to get the good jobs. They started to migrate West and North for the good jobs. When you start seeing a drove of black people going into these, uh, to these jobs and start infiltrating these communities, one thing that they did that has never been talked about is start outsourcing the jobs. Now, people think outsourcing was just outsourcing overseas. What people are failed to realize and what they would do is outsource those jobs into rural white areas because the majority of black people live within a city confine. That was a part of redlining. So what are you trying to say? What is the men's accountability? Okay. You know that these factors are going on to destroy black people, right? From the government side. Where is our responsibility to say, I'd be damned you do that in our community. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make sure instead of, uh, instead of spending my money with people who don't care about me, I'm going to start spending my money with black people who are starting, who are starting jobs. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not, uh, who's, who has a particular jobs and stuff like that. I'm going to just start building with them. I'm going to start putting our money within, within our, my own community, just like the Jews do, just like the Asians do. They don't look for anyone to give them anything. You got to do what you got to do. And I understand that I'm not knocking anybody who goes to get a job, but when we had our own community, we had thriving, thriving communities. What we went to go do once the end of segregation happened, we went to go buy with them. That's our fault. So the destruction of the community still falls on us. When I start talking about men's accountability, when we start looking at the things that have go, that have went on, what did we do to change it? What did we do to say no? Buy with us. Why are you going to buy with Sears when you've been having a local a, a, a local teller here and you had a local business that sold appliances here? You had a you had a places that sold you know, uh, your, your, your hardware. So you could be able to build your houses and, and be able to, to buy that, uh, uh, to, to be able to buy that land and buy that house and be able to fix the houses. No, what we did once we got free is we started taking our money elsewhere because we felt a certain way. We felt good about going to spend our money where they didn't want us. So now you have a bunch of men that are comfortable now. And I'm putting the onus on men because we had men that said that they were leaders in our community leading us into destruction. And what happens when you lead a group of people into destruction? You start to see the fall of the community. And no one wants to take accountability because it's easier to blame it on the white man. It's easier to say, well, if the white man wasn't attacking us, we wouldn't have these problems. If the white man didn't do this, our black women will believe in us. But where was our leadership when the leaders, when Malcolm X, when Martin Luther King and all these other Starkly Carmichael's and all these other people, you, you know, the, 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 the Huey Newtons of the world, when all these people started to fall. Right. Why didn't someone take up the mantle and stop being scared? And then you wonder why our women don't want to fall in line. Because men refuse to take accountability. 
We refuse to go ahead and step into the leadership. Why? Because you're scared. Why do you think it was so easy for women to go out there in March for Black Lives Matter? And then what happens when you start seeing the leaders of Black Lives Matter start getting matches to start getting money and say, you know, I can go ahead and resign. Where was the men that that should have stepped up and said, you know what, sister, I see what you're doing, but I'm about to bring 100,000 men up in here and we about to march for this. We about to stand up for this because it shouldn't have the, the, the onus on the women to do it. It shouldn't be your responsibility. It should be my responsibility. When we start seeing a lead of the women start feeling like, oh, if I propagate individuality and independence and I don't need a man, what was the men to say, damn that I need you. I need you because what they're trying to do is divide us. Think for yourself. What happened when we started to see the propaganda being shoved down our throat? Did we say, hell no, I'm going to change the narrative? Or did we fall into the propaganda trap? See, that falls on us. It's no different than when we started to look at the Bible and see when Eve bit that apple, even though Adam already knew you're not supposed to do that. All he had to do was nip it in the bud. That's all he had to do. You better not eat that apple. I don't care what that serpent is saying. You eat it, you already know what's going to happen. What did he do? Went along right with his woman and listened to her instead of being the man that God designed him for. Because his job, his only job was to have dominion over the animals in the ground. Till the ground, make sure the ground is, is, is taken care of and have and make sure that you name the animals and have dominion over the animals. And he allowed a snake, which is an animal, to get in this woman's ear. And then he fell right along in the trap. And then at the end of it, he tried to blame God. He told God, man, yo, that's the woman you gave me. He couldn't even take responsibility and accountability for his own actions and say, well, if I would have, just stood there in the gap between destruction and eternal life in the garden, I wouldn't be in this position. Because as a man, I have to be able to stand in the gap. You wonder why our children are born without fathers? Because we allowed the government to put us in the trap. And the woman feels like she has to be able to do everything. We get, we get, we, 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 we go out there and we feel like we have to sell drugs. You don't have to do anything. Use your brain. The, all they do is set the cheese. That's it. And pull the mousetrap back. You are the idiot that smells it and think you can go and grab it. That's your fault. And if you don't take accountability for the things that you do, you wonder why the leadership in the black community is where it is. And now you're mad because you see women being praised for their leadership and what they're doing. But men, I challenge you, what are you doing to step up and not be what every, everybody else wants you to be? To start thinking and operating on your own mind, on your own accord. Let me show you the definition of just leadership. Let me just show you, let me just show you the definition of leadership. Because you can't sit here and say that you're a leader. And then you look around. And someone else is leading you to destruction. So we've seen accountability, right? So let's go into leadership. And this is what we need a lot more of. We can't sit up here and look at someone to save us. A real leader sees his platoon getting shot at. Right? Circles the troops. Yo, 
You see how they doing this. Let's formulate a plan because I'd be damn I die like this. If I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down like this with y'all protecting y'all. So this is how we about to do it. I'm about to go ahead and create the strategy so we can be able to lead ourselves in the victory or die trying. And don't be afraid to die for what you truly believe in. That is the preservation of our people. Leadership. Let me show you the action of leading a group of people or organization. The state or position of being a leader. That's what leadership is. And then similar words to leadership is guidance, direction, authority, control, management, superintendence, headship, governance, governorship, directorialship or directorship, direction. Our women are not going to believe in us if we don't have direction. Our women are not our women are not going to believe in us if we can't manage. Our women are not going to believe in us if we can't take the time and be able to stand in the gap and say, this is where we're going and why? Because I have the leadership and I have the direction and the vision to lead us into prosperity. Ain't no woman gonna lead, ain't gonna follow you if you ain't going no damn where. Where's she going? Where are you gonna take her? It's the blind leading the blind. And the women are so needed right now because they can be able to help you on, the, on your direction, on your way to it. But you're so caught up in this self-preservation mode, Omega Men, that you can't even see what type of woman that you have. And you wonder why women are sitting around here frustrated. You wonder why they're frustrated. With the lead, the, the 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 lack of accountability between black men, you wonder why. This is the reason why. Because we refuse to take accountability for the things we have done. It's not all on them. If I'm a leader, I can't blame my my. If I'm the general, I can't blame my lieutenant for leading her wrong. I can't blame her for that because she was following my lead. So if I got the lack of leadership right now, that falls on me because I'm not leading her right. And now she's mad and she's frustrated. She was like, damn it, I'd rather just do it myself because y'all don't see it. Because you're in self-preservation mode instead of saying, let me lead the pack so we all can eat. That's why I never call a man a, a, a beta. I always use the word omega because in the wolf pack, you have alphas and you have omegas. Alphas lead the pack to make sure everyone eats. Omegas are too weak to be able to lead a pack so they get the scraps. That's what they do. They just, in self-preservation mode, so they just, hey, I, I just get the scraps. I just steal, kill. I destroy whatever I can go, go with because that's the only thing I can do because I have the lack of leadership. So when you have lack of leadership, there's no way that I could be able to lead anybody because I don't have that function built inside of me. And I don't want to follow anybody because I'm in self-preservation mode. They might change me. They might make me bigger than what I am. Or maybe they are actually opening my mind so I could go from an omega to an alpha. But I'm in so, I'm in so much self-preservation mode that I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it because it might actually change my life. And instead of being comfortable with the scraps, I could be able to eat for myself and then in the process, feed everybody else around me. That's the thing. And we have way too many Omegas calling themselves leaders. So when you get a man like me who going to stand on his principles and going to stand on what he believes, I'd rather have 10 people follow me than 100,000 people listen to me and I lead them to destruction. So, men, I'm asking you, are you going to be the sheep or are you going to be the alpha wolf that leads his people to eat? 
now I'm about to open it up to people over in uh in Clubhouse right now. If y'all if y'all wanna if y'all wanna speak. Absolutely, man. Uh I, I thank you for this platform that you're on. I think you're doing an amazing job. You said a lot of great gems within your spill, and I believe that self accountability is important. I mentioned it actually myself yesterday, and I think a lot of men need to really own it. These women out here are hurting. They're looking, they're looking for somebody to stand in the gap, and they're tired of fighting everybody and fight by themselves. These men out here, you know, they need to really own their bullshit at the end of the day. You know, the Bible says as a child, I did childish things, but when I become a man, I let go of those childish things. And a lot of men need to stand on that. It's okay to admit that at some point you were full of shit. Young and dumb, having fun, and you're not really caring about anybody else in particular for that matter. But now, when you're older, and times have changed, and we see women out here venting about you know, these men what they need, it's important to listen. Mm -hmm. You know what? Because we're very defensive. We, we, we jump on the defense uh, and quick. But the reality is that we know what we stand as individuals, and we know what we did back in the day and what we should be doing now. And it's not about women being tired of us men. It's about women being tired of us men not standing up. And I think mm -hmm. we need to do so. And uh, as a father of a, a daughter, who needs to see a role model, a man taking care of his family. Mm -hmm. I always push to do that because we have children coming up behind us. And you don't want your daughter dating a man that ain't shit. Mm -hmm. You don't want your daughter dating a man that's gonna treat you wrong, disrespect you, you know, let alone to watch your mother go through it. So we definitely have to step up and to point fingers at those that are playing the games because women out here are hurting and they need us just as much as we need them. Absolutely. And I, think, I think right now there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a, a miscommunication between us, and there's a there's a there's a systematical way of breaking us down, and that's fighting us against each other, and we're doing that. Mm -hmm. We're doing it countless times, and I'm tired of it. As a man, I like to see us talk about what we can do and give solutions and really shine the light on our queens and let them see that, look, we appreciate you, and everybody ain't full of shit. All these men aren't full of shit, and we're here, and we hear your cries, and we're here to help you. Absolutely, absolutely. That was wonderful, wonderful. Uh, anyone else want, wants to speak? Any other ladies uh, want to speak um, on this particular subject, or any of the fellas uh, want to speak on this? Because I want to hear the late. I want to hear the the lady side of this because it, it's because it seems like when we when we're going back and forth with the with the insults and stuff like that. Is is we could get a hundred people, hundred and so people in here, but when we're actually talking about real stuff, it seems like we can't get anybody in here. So if anybody else wants to uh wants to speak on this, all right. So we're gonna close that portion uh, portion down. I do appreciate everybody who uh, stuck around here in Clubhouse. Uh, my big thing is is this. Like it's easy. It's easier for us to fall among, uh, fight amongst each other and call each other names and disrespect each other and, and point the fingers. But it takes a real individual, a real leader, to actually bring us together. And my thing is, is that my job is to bring my people together. That is what I've been destined to do. That is part of my purpose. And this is me walking in my purpose. I don't have to be loud. I don't have to be boastful. But damn it, you're going to hear me coming. And that's the big thing because a true leader is just going to make it happen. He don't have to sit up here and talk about nothing else but show his work and be damn good at it too. Work hard. Have a vision for yourself, fellas. But don't forget to be a leader. And if you don't know how to be a leader, go find out how to be. There's plenty of men out here that are doing wonderful things in our community. And those are the men that need to be praised, that to need to be uplifted. And that needs to be shown that you are valuable to our community. We have Father's Day coming up. There's so many wonderful black fathers Wonderful men, period. But I'm particularly talking about black, the black fathers too. They're single black dads. They don't get the recognition. They're out there handling their business. There's black men out there that's handling their business on the front lines for us every day. 
And for that, I salute you. This is your man, Dre Mack. I'm about to go ahead and, uh, and wrap this up. I thank everybody who tuned in to the Dre Mack show. You know, sometimes you got to you, you gotta be able to just bring stuff like this because, again, I could talk about Marvel and I could talk about all this other stuff. But if I don't talk about bringing my people together, then what am I doing this for? I'll holler at you. Peace and shalom to everyone. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Dre Mack, with another episode of the Dre Mack Podcast Show.